hello pray and share warriors how are y'all doing tonight it is an awesome night no i don't have open what i need to have open it's funny i come in here and i start doing other things start listening to people on youtube when i should be taking care of my own business i am not so i'm sorry but i think i'm ready now I think I have everything together now. I'm trying to get my music going. I really like having music going at the same time. I'm trying to get this Bluetooth in there. I only have 31%. That's not a lot. <laughs> get it to stop sorry I can't let I would love to let y'all listen to music like I used to but I can't do that anymore I got all these stupid um, mm, notifications coming up I'm trying to Bluetooth my phone can't Bluetooth it while all that stuff's coming up. Okay, maybe we're fixing to get this going. Oh, yay. It connected. I am so glad. I don't know why the sound is not very loud with my Bluetooth. I don't know. It's just not very loud anymore. It used to be. Oh, I guess it's loud enough. Okay. Just going to be thankful. Okay, I'm listening to Waymaker right now. Which is good for the subject tonight, which is Gyra. Uh, God is enough. So God is enough. And so Gyra means provider. And this goes back to the story of Abraham and Isaac. So we're going to read that. And then we're going to read about Jesus and his um, willingness to be obedient to God. And um, I think it will be a good study. This song popped into my head this morning, just the word gyra. And so... I'm going to share what I wrote about it, but first we're going to jump into some prayer. I hope you had the opportunity to go and praise and worship with your church family today. I did, and then I had the pleasure of hanging out with our youth, playing games. We had a game, a game day after church, and we ate pizza, and we hung out, and um, it was a good time. It really was. I was kind of skeptical, I was kind of whiny, wanting to be home in my jammies, but I'm really glad, I'm really glad we did that. I think that's a good, easy um, thing that we can do with them, and I think it helps them bond together. We're going to take them to camp in June, so I think it was a good, a good thing. All right, well, let's jump into some prayer. Let's start with some prayer. It's always a good place to start. I don't know why I am being the floating head on one of my cameras, and now this other one is yellow. All right, that is so weird. I don't know why it does that. And then after a while, it just clears up. Who knows? Might help if I knew more about some of the electronics that I'm using right now. But, okay, let's jump into prayer. God, we just thank you. We thank you because you are our way maker. You are 
our miracle worker, you are our promise keeper, and you are our light in the darkness, God, and so much more. You are our provider, you are our provider, you are Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rapha. God, you do so many things for us. God, you are on your throne and you are in control and nothing is hidden from you, God. You see and you hear everything that goes on, God. And you will attend to everything in your perfect timing and your perfect will, God. It is our job to trust you, to walk in obedience, and to walk in the Spirit. God, we just... Uh, we praise you because you are mighty and magnificent and powerful, but yet you are loving and compassionate and kind and long-suffering, wanting none to perish, God. Your invitation to heaven goes out to everyone. They just need to come through Jesus, your Son. God, we just uh, thank you for loving us, for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. God, we pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We pray for them to see where they are and to repent, to return to you, God. We pray for all the disasters going on, God. There is so much senseless murder right now god we pray for these families that are involved in this children being shot by people that are just driving by their yard god this is senseless evil and god we just pray for these families we pray for these children to be healed through their wounds god and we pray for their families for you to give them strength God, we also pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. We just pray, God, that in their loss, they will feel your presence. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my friends. It's time to get into... First of all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read what I wrote. Very, I did not write a lot. But I have been thinking about this today, off and on. Also been making lists of things that I need to do this summer. I was doing that while the youth were playing games with each other. And so, um, anyway. Okay, so I love this song and message. And it was the first word that I thought of today. And that's gyra. Gyra, which means provider. You know, that's God. He's our provider. This song is by Elevation Worship, but many churches are singing this song. The version that I shared is by another church. I hear this song on the radio nearly every time I get in my car to go somewhere on Air One. The, I love the lyrics of this song. God is our provider and so much more. His love surrounds us each day and he protects us daily also. This song, I think, is based on the story of Abraham and Isaac in the Old Testament. God tested Abraham's faithfulness to him, and at the last moment, God provided the sacrifice. Jehovah Jireh, God is our provider. God is faithful to provide for us as a result of our obedience, just like Abraham. God also provided a sacrifice for everyone to cleanse us of our sins and to provide an eternal home at the end of our Christianity journey. Jesus died for all. Jesus was God's provision for all. Is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish, John 3, 16, 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. So, you know, I think the reason why people do not accept Jesus as their Savior is because maybe they don't think they deserve it, you know, but none of us deserve it. We're all sinners. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. It is not hard to fall short of the glory of God because... 
He is all glory. And so we let him down all the time. So let's read the story about the story of Isaac and uh, Abraham and Isaac. And it's back in Genesis. And then we'll move forward and we will read some of the other scriptures about provider. Okay. Genesis 22 says this, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. This was God was tempting Abraham. He tempts us sometimes. He tests us sometimes. Uh, and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went, both of them, together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together, and they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him, a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. And he said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, 
because thou hast obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. And it came to pass after these saying, these things, that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah, she hath also borne children unto thy brother Nahor. So because Abraham was obedient, God had a huge blessing for him. You know, we have been we've been studying the Old Testament like really quickly, one book at a time, just highlights of one book at a time. But through Abraham, God promised him the all the descendants of him that they would be blessed. All the Israelites would be blessed. So because of Abraham's obedience, Israel is a blessed nation. I wonder what would have happened if Abraham would have said, No, you gave me this son. I waited a long time for this son. He did. As a matter of fact, he, he decided, he got tired of waiting on God, and him and Sarah decided to have offspring with with her handmaid and that is why these two nations are at war all the time they're siblings they're brothers anyway but God is our provider and sometimes we have to wait for that provision I think I'm talking to myself because I have several things that I'm waiting on. But we have to wait for that provision because God is, will do it in His perfect will, in His perfect timing. And we mess things up a lot of times when we go ahead of God and try to figure things out because we don't want to wait. I'm talking to myself, I think, right now. So we can mess things up a lot just by thinking that we can help God because we can't help God. He's, he's got it all figured out. He already had it figured out. All we have to do is trust him. He knew when he asked Abraham to go and do this, he knew he was going to provide. But he knew he was going to test Abraham up until the last second to see if Abraham trusted him to provide. So Abraham did everything that he would do if he had a lamb to sacrifice, but he didn't have a lamb. But God provided a ram in the bushes. So they sacrificed the ram instead of Isaac. And Isaac went on, and Isaac had many children. And just on and on, down the genealogy. And this is the genealogy of Jesus. So if Abraham hadn't been obedient, would there be Jesus? I mean, there, Jesus always was, but would Jesus have shown up when he did? Who knows? But I think the story of Abraham and Isaac is a precursor of God being the Father and Jesus being the Son. And also another thing that really stood out to me, the pictures that I was looking at, the images, is that it doesn't say that Isaac resisted. It doesn't say that Isaac argued. It doesn't say that Isaac tried to get out of the ropes, <laughs> you know. He was obedient too. So Isaac was obedient too. Jesus. Jesus is obedient too. So I think it's a foreshadow of God the Father and Jesus the Son. Abraham the Father and Isaac the Son. But this time, Jesus 
went through the sacrifice. Okay, let's read some more scriptures about God being the provider. Okay, let's just, we're just going to read in the order that these are in because I didn't take time to, I didn't take time to number them. Sorry, I've had, I've had quite a bit of time this afternoon, but I just didn't do it. Okay, I'm going to read all of uh, 54 because it's not very long. It says, Save me, O God, by thy name, and judge me by thy strength. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers are risen up against me, and oppressors seek after my soul. They have not set God before them, Selah. Behold, God is mine helper. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. He shall reward evil unto mine enemies. Cut them off in thy truth. I will freely sacrifice unto thee. I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. For he hath delivered me out of all trouble, and mine eye hath seen his desire upon my enemies. So God is providing for David here protection. And he is, um, David is being obedient to God too. Saying, I will freely sacrifice unto thee. Okay, so let's read what would be next. John. I guess John. I love this song. Such a good song. Philippians 4.19 Oh no, it's going to John. John Let's read John 530. 530 says, I can of mine own self do nothing as I hear. I judge and my judgment is judge just because I seek not mine own will but the will of the Father which hath sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that bear witness that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. So this is Jesus speaking, but it's kind of an example of provision. Provision of God to bestow upon Jesus what he does through him. And then also the Holy Spirit, provision of the Holy Spirit. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay, let's read Philippians 4.19. sing to you but I just love this song such a good song okay so Philippians 4 19 says but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus 
Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren which are with me greet you. All the saints salute you. Chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. So God, God, God is enough. God is enough. Because he will supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory through Jesus. So we don't really have to worry about what we need. God knows what we need. I think he likes to hear us express what we need. But I don't think we're supposed to help him. I don't think we're supposed to run ahead of him and try to help him. I think that he he knows what we need and he will provide. And he is a great provider. My husband and I were talking about a budget. And I said, well, it's depressing because when I put it on paper, it doesn't work. But every month, month after month, it works because God supplies. He supplies things that are not in the in the category of our income. He, <laughs> you know, so it's just, it's depressing to put it on paper because it doesn't work on paper. But with God working all of it out, we're able to pay all of our bills, even last year, which I was really surprised about because the last year was, I thought, going to be a really rough year, but financially for us, it wasn't, I guess, because we didn't have a small business that we had to shut down, but I don't know. Okay, so Hebrews 13.5 says this. Hebrews 13.5. Hebrews 13.5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. So the Lord is our helper. He is our helper. He will, he will provide what we need. He provided us Jesus. We were lost in sin. He provided us Jesus as our Savior. Really, what more do we need? You know, if we seek the kingdom of God first, then everything falls into place. Everything just falls into place. Are things perfect all the time? No, absolutely not. We're going to go through things. Just like Abraham. Do you think that Abraham was faithful? Very faithful. Like, God would say, Abraham, and he would go, here am I. You know, he was always listening for God. But God wanted to make sure that he was faithful. Maybe God wanted to make sure that he, he deserved the blessing that he wanted to do through Israel. And eventually through Jesus. Maybe he wanted to make sure. I mean, God, God is God. He is in control. And... Uh, I think that's all on here that I see. But I do want to read about, I don't know which version I want to read. I want to read about the sacrifice that Jesus made for us on the cross and leading up to it. Leading up to him, the trial, the... the uh, I don't know which version. Okay, let's just start with Christ's trials in John 18, starting with 25. 
And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art, art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crow, crow, crew, the cock crew, he crowed, he crowed. That's kind of a hard word to say. He crew. Um... And Jesus said that that would happen. Mm. Then led they, they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. And it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful, lawful for us to put any man to death that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, I am, am I a Jew? Pilate was not a Jew, he was a Roman. Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered, in, delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, for, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one of the one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. So they chose a robber. The Jews chose a robber over Jesus. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And... Um, Scourged him does not describe what they did to him. They watch the passion. I'll just watch the passion. That will show you what they did to him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe. And they didn't just put it on his head. They shoved the thorns down into his head. Um... And said, Hail, King of the Jews, and they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again, and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him, and crucify him, and I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. 
When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. And they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of the skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha where they crucified him and two other with, other with him, on either side, one in Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priest, priest of the Jews to Pilate, write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier a part, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing all things, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. So in reading that, I didn't see a Jesus that was struggling to get off the cross. I didn't see a Jesus that was struggling to argue and say, save me. I saw obedience. I saw obedience to God for us because God loves us. I saw total obedience in what I read. Just like Isaac was obedient, I saw total obese. I mean, yes, Isaac was obedient too. He didn't fight. He didn't complain. He didn't, you know, 
Abraham was fixing to stab him when the angel said no. Nobody said no when Jesus was going to the cross because that was God's plan. Because when Jesus went to the cross, this was the last blood sacrifice required for sin because Jesus bore all of our sin and shame on the cross. And Jesus was beaten nearly to death before he got to the cross by instruments of um, a lot of people when the Romans beat them, they didn't live through the beating, but Jesus did. And he carried his own cross most of the way, but then he got too weak. But he didn't fight. I don't hear any fights. I hear obedience. I hear total obedience. You know, you don't have power except that God gives it. That's what he told Pilate. Pilate tried not to kill him. Pilate didn't want to do that. But the Jewish priests forced it on him. So God is enough. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. He provides everything that we need. When we need it, he provides it. So I think that's all I want to read about that. I just kind of wanted to show the parallel because I felt that parallel before. And so I went and Googled it. Well, I, I don't Google anymore. I duck, duck, go. I ducked it or I, I duck, goed it. I don't know what you say. Anyway which really goes through Google and it doesn't make any sense to me, but whatever. Anyway, there were a lot of articles about that people thought the story of Abraham and Isaac was a parallel to God and Jesus. So I just wanted to read that and um, I just wanted, I didn't do my quiet time until this afternoon. So I'm just going to skim over it. So this is what God spoke to me today. Child, I will always be enough. I will always be your provider and protector. All you have to do is be obedient to me. Walk in my righteousness, in my ways. Strive to grow closer and closer to me every day. Keep following Jesus, child. He will lead you and all my children to me, to heaven. My children need to be ready for Jesus at all times. My children can have peace through the Holy Spirit in the midst of chaos. They don't have to worry because I will supply all the needs like I did in the wilderness for the Israelites. They must only trust my will and timing which are always perfect. Trust me fully in all things, child, and you will watch all fall into place perfectly. And I said, okay, God, I will do what you say. I will wait on you and your perfect will and perfect timing. I will wait on you. I will trust you with everything. Thank you for meeting me this afternoon, God. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, my child. Now go share that I am Jaira and I am enough for everyone. They must come to me through my son. He paid the price for all of my creation. All are invited. Let them know of my love for them and I can provide what they need. The reunion is soon, child, so be ready. Be ready at any time. The marriage supper of the Lamb is being prepared. It will be so wonderful, child, to see all of my children home in peace and security. And I said, Maranatha, God, I'm ready. I'm ready for that peace and security because I am not feeling the peace and security here at all. I am feeling that chaos, major chaos is coming. That a great awakening 
is coming. A great spiritual awakening is coming. And then I think when we get to the peak of that great spiritual awakening, Jesus will come. Because right now, part of what we're doing is we are getting in the harvest. We are working on inviting people into salvation through Jesus. I think I'll use the E-band tonight. Had to figure out which way the E-band goes. There we are. So, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. And that is Romans 1.16. So, the gold color of this bracelet represents God, the creator of all who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light, and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you, and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. So the dark color represents sin, which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty for our sin is death or separation from God forever. So the first question mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? Well, the blood of Jesus. The red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life with God. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. So the white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash away wash our sins away. When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. So this question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? And so if the answer is no, it's really easy to do this. I'm going to say a prayer and you can repeat after me. Let's pray. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and to save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so the next color is green. The green color represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the areas of growth. So we have the heart. We have the heart there. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we love our neighbors as ourselves. Love God, love people. I nearly did that tonight. I may do that tomorrow. Okay, read the Bible each day to learn more about God and His love. The next one is praying, a little praying man. Read the Bible, um, pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with Him. And then we've got the emblem of the water, 
when we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. And so then the next one is hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. Share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in him. Tell as many people as you can. So that's what I'm doing tonight. I'm sharing. I'm sharing this message. So if you said that prayer and you invited Jesus into your heart to be your Lord, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. All right, well, I think I have done everything that I came to do. I'm going to do this blessing and pray and get off of here. Oh, I think that the mosquitoes are in my house and attacking us. So number 62426 says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Peace is needed. There's not a lot of peace right now. I don't know if you've watched the news, but there's not a lot. So let's pray for peace. Let's thank God for being our provider. I love this song. It's talking about the marriage of the Lamb. Mm, so good. God, we just come before you, God, and we thank you. You are Jehovah Jireh, and you are enough, God. You are enough. You will always be enough. You're more than enough. God, we praise you and thank you for that. God, we praise you and thank you for giving us Jesus that offers us eternal life. We thank you for the sacrifice that he made for us. His blood that redeemed our souls, God, from the enemy and brought them back to you. God, we just thank you and we praise you. I pray for Miss Josie and Mike and the boys. I just pray that they would, you would just heal their bodies more and more every day. And God, we just pray we just pray that um, you would just help us, give us the boldness to go out and share your truth and to share the gospel of Jesus. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, that is my child. My child has decided to join me. <laughs> He's in a chair over here. Come here. Come give me a hug. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come over here. I know you want to eat. Come here. Come tell me. Mm, so this is my son, Seth. He's a mess. He's a mess, so he wants to eat. So you want to tell me? Say, I. I. Say, I. <coughs> want. To. To. Eat. <coughs> Please, mm. mom, mom, mm. mom, mm. mom, mm. no, mom, mm. mom, mm. you're just mom, mm. mom, mm. he's not wanting to do it, I, 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 mm. love, mm. You. All right. Not his best effort, but I gotta feed him anyway. But he was so good today. He was hugging the youth today. He was giving hugs and love today. That's that's Seth's ministry. Seth's a leukemia survivor. He's kind of small. He's 17. Um, and I'm teaching him to say words. Which is very frustrating for both of us because I don't think he wants to say words. But he is getting better. He's getting better. He told somebody hi at church today and nearly fell over. 
So God is answering those prayers, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful for that. So have an awesome rest of your night. And my cats come in here too. Gracie? Have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow. Have an awesome Memorial Day. I hope you get a holiday tomorrow. I am taking a holiday tomorrow. So much love and cyber hugs. Till I see you again, good night.